Let's just get the biggest sin out of the way for this game, specifically the Special Edition. Its development was rushed, which resulted in us getting an incomplete game. So instead of using the years and resources to vastly improve it, they simply added three new characters to play, which in and of itself is a good thing. But that just means you'll get to replay the same levels that were already repetitive to play when the game initially released. If the Special Edition added new levels, new enemies, and new bosses along with the three new playable characters, this game might have eclipsed Devil May Cry 3. But alas, that never happened. Which leads me to Capcom. Fortuna City. A few decades ago, huh? That would mean this takes place before DMC3. So, at some point while he was attempting to obtain his father's power, Virgil found a random woman and was motivated to insert the sperm of Sparta into her, despite him clearly rejecting his humanity in DMC3, viewing it as a weakness. In essence, Virgil had a literal hate boner. I see that Virgil is performing his sheath your sword to cause damage trope. We get it. Virgil is lightning fast and badass. You don't need to keep demonstrating this technique to prove it. Out of all the moves Virgil does have in this special edition, this Yamato round trip is not one of them, breaking a cardinal rule of Devil May Cry. Don't show a move in a cutscene if you're unable to perform it in game. There's no reason to flick your hair, Virgil. You aren't even fighting in the rain. Boy, I'm sure this feels awkward. A DMC3 rematch that's not even canon. Well, I can't exactly call them misguided. But soon they shall know this devil's power. A power greater than they ever imagined. The power of a son of Sparta. And that's pretty much all the backstory you're gonna get on this trip to Fortuna. Wait until Devil May Cry 5 for us to confirm what you've long suspected. But the real problem is the Order. Lately, they've been running amok, catching demons, and have even butted in on some of my jobs. Strange, considering it's now been confirmed that Fortuna is one of the most secluded parts of the world. Meaning, even if you had a chance encounter with them, you'd have no proof it was them, since they're not exactly well known. They've also been targeting devil arms, like the ones you have. Had, lady. You'll notice that Dante doesn't use Beowulf, Cerberus, Nevin, Alistair, Ifrit, or Agni and Rudra in this game. That's because he's so far in debt he had to sell off those devil arms to pay his bills. Well then, I'd have something to keep me occupied and... Trish! Seriously? Neither of you noticed Trish leaving? Especially when she would have exited right in front of you? Since Fortuna is so isolated, why are there Fortuna demons outside of Dante's shop? There's no longer an open portal near it. Devil May Cry 4 pulled a Metal Gear Solid 2 by introducing a new character to replace an already established and beloved main protagonist. I eventually got over it, but it doesn't change the fact that when I first booted up Devil May Cry 4, I was like, who are you and why am I not playing as Dante? Meet Kyrie, a character who really serves no purpose other than being Nero's walking, talking plot device, and has no defining trait other than caring for the helpless. Quite the downgrade, seeing as how we had Lady in the previous game, who had multiple layers to her and managed to hold her own against the Sons of Sparta. These enemies drop right out of the gateway to the Elder Gods. In Explicable Spotlight is only there to let you know whether Nero is present or not. It would be quite the distraction for the prayer service otherwise. Sup, babe. Sorry I missed your entire performance. That's okay. Teehee. Not really a surprise for Dante's arrival when you have him spying on the church here. Wasn't aware the Order of the Sword was also the Assassin's Brotherhood. Two thousand years ago, the Dark Knight, Sparta. Turned against his demon brethren and took up his sword for the sake of mankind. Thank you very much for giving me a reminder of Sparta's backstory, as if I didn't hear about it in the three previous games. Japan? These people are not greeting a sensei. This is not proper prayer. I'm out of here. But it's not over yet. All this preaching's putting me to sleep. I was preaching putting you to sleep when you were listening to your music. Nero's arm is able to detect when a demon is nearby, and later on in this very church, Dante dispatches many order knights who turn out to be demons, all of whom were present during Sanctus's sermon. Yet Nero's arm doesn't glow the moment he stepped into this church. <laughs> It's cute that the game tries to trick you into thinking that lifelong babyface Dante is suddenly making a career heel turn. It's not like the Order has an unhealthy obsession with worshipping his dad after all. Also, we later find out that the Order was planning on using Dante's blood to power up the Savior. So why didn't they set up a trap for him when he arrives to assassinate Sanctus? Dante is powerful, but he's not invincible. You got a jacked up notion of fair play, pal. And it's beginning to piss me off. 
At no point does Nero ever question that maybe him and Dante have something in common. I mean, the similar fighting style, similar clothing, white hair. Maybe he should use some of those proud souls to purchase a clue. Speaking of proud souls, they are completely pointless and unnecessary. We only need one type of currency to acquire items and skills. You can tell this game was made for new players since the mission screen tells you to face off against the mysterious assassin. As if us Devil May Cry fans didn't already play three previous games as Dante. You know, Nero, since your gun actually requires you to reload and it's a modified version of a real life weapon, how come none of your outfits have a gun belt attached to it? What's the point of packing a sword like that if you aren't even gonna use it? Yep, that deserves a sin removed. So, you're looking to play, huh? Alright, I guess I got some time to kill. I mean, haven't you already been playing with him for the past few minutes now? Well, that's certainly gonna cause some problems for a later game, but uh, I'll wait till I get around to that video. So for now, I think it's safe to now call this a Dante gets impaled by a weapon he uses cliche. You aren't human, are you? And somehow you think you are? Do you regularly come across people who have a demonic arm like you? Though I suspect you carry something different from the others. What are you talking about? You will come to learn the meaning soon enough. Soon enough. Ha! Ah! Now that's the best joke Dante has ever made. You'll actually have to wait 11 more years and another full game to really learn the meaning, Nero. Kratos requested. She yearns for your touch. Definitely not the best words to be using towards your boyfriend. You know, you guys are acting awfully calm while watching your residents get effortlessly slaughtered by these demons. These demons leap behind Kyrie as if they're gonna immediately strike her. Yet it'll take Nero a few seconds to block their attacks. Nero, your sword is called the Red Queen. I did not need to be reminded of that shitty live-action Resident Evil movie. Snatch? Well now, that just adds some unnecessary sexual innuendo to bang, 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 pull my devil trigger. Yeah, I don't mind this evil energy just laying around here, not raising any suspicion at all. <laughs> this actually works. Let me guess. More demons. If it bothers you that much, why don't you just destroy the Hellgate? Burial has impeccable timing. He knew exactly when the boss battle was going to begin. This sign that flips when Burial arrives says Mundus Corporation, meaning these sly bastards were foreshadowing the completely unwanted DMC reboot before it was even an idea. These high damage Devil Bringer animations are some of the reasons why this game is so great. The best part is there's no prompts for it, and the game doesn't need to resort itself to tiresome gimmicks such as quick time events. You're rewarded for figuring them out all on your own. And that's how any action game should be. Just like Even ancient demons can't resist using the pronoun game. So, after three games of having a slow movement speed, they finally give you the opportunity to move faster. But you have to purchase it with Proud Souls. Jesus, even without microtransactions, they're still stingy with abilities. I am also very disappointed that Get More Orbs and Enemy Step are abilities you have to purchase when the latter is basically the combat system and the former is utterly pointless. See how Nero has legs? I can use them to get orbs! Should have known they were going to introduce a goofy grappling mechanic at some point. Where was this bridge supposed to lead to? The entrance to the castle is beneath it. There's even stairs on the other side of the bell tower leading downwards. Bell tower collapses for no reason. Hey there, Frost. I remember kicking your ass back on Malay Island, which detonated into oblivion. How and why have you survived? Some people at Capcom must be precogs, because they designed a character based off of Lady Gaga four months before the public even knew about her. Then again, this probably was the character that inspired Bayonetta, being able to fight on graded floors and high heels and everything. Matrix shenanigans were outdated even before this game released. So, What's the deal? Where are they coming from? Couldn't possibly be those hell gates, one of which you refused to destroy when you fought burial. Euroblades, aka the objects that only exist so we can have an excuse to use the buster. You're a kid now, you're a squid now. Splat -da 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 the splat dude. These lures are not nearly long enough for Bale to be concealed by them. That's why he was given a dumb cloaking mechanic. Devil May Cry continuing its streak of enemies that can phase through walls like assholes. Nero is about to discover an entrance to a secret passage with no clue as to how he figured it out. Luck! Blind, stupid, simple, doodah, clueless! 
Yeah, when you see your previously dead leader resurrect with glowing demonic red eyes, you should probably start thinking you're not one of the good guys. My men are currently in pursuit of Dante. Then why do you have Nero doing the same thing? All you did was validate Agnes's concern. Watch out before me! Shh. Should he stumble upon my research facility? Hey, look, it's everyone's favorite part of the game. Such a great use of developmental resources. Oh, I see, Nero. Your arm only glows when it's convenient and the plot demands it. Why is Yamato split in half and in the Order's possession, you may ask? Good question. Because chronologically speaking, the last time we saw Virgil, he was defeated by Dante as Nello Angelo and sealed away back into the demon world. And Virgil's appearance in Fortuna happened decades ago. How did the Order obtain Yamato in the human world if it was trapped in the demon world? So... You've come just as I'd expected. He says after being anxious about Nero stumbling across his research facility. I mean, it is secret after all. Were you faking your concern? Because I'm still sending you if that's the case. Nero gets pierced, but he ends up having no entry wound. You have no idea the hardship to make just one armor. Come to life. You have your motto in your possession. Even if it is fragmented, that sword wields enough demonic power to complete any project of yours with ease. Junior, run! <laughs> oh, Johnny Young Bosch. You definitely missed your opportunity to play in the DMC anime. <laughs> Makes it even more amazing knowing how appropriate that song is going back and replaying this game, ain't it? Nighttime when Nero enters the cave, daytime when he exits the cave. What the hell is this? I was wondering the same thing, Dante. As I once again ask, why aren't we playing as you? You don't get to randomly show up and then disappear just as quickly. Nero just spent the last six missions hunting down Dante. Now that he's got Dante in his sights, he just willingly allows him to escape. That arrogant kid possesses... Demonic power! Absurd. Absurd? He resurrected Yamato! And this is a problem how again? The whole point of acquiring Yamato was to figure out how to make it whole again and open the main Hellgate. You actually got very fortunate Nero came across your research facility. Makes it all the more puzzling why you were surprised he resurrected Yamato if you were expecting him. Can you apprehend this boy? If that is your wish. Though who will then track Dante? Pretty sure you said earlier you already had men searching for Dante as well. My men are currently in pursuit of Dante. Prepare yourselves to take a trip through the Grown Zone as you deal with awful gimmicky platforming. You know, the one gameplay mechanic Devil May Cry has never been good at. Well, if you were that concerned about your children, you wouldn't have launched them like cannon fodder. Now would be a great time for you to destroy a Hellgate, Nero. Oh, you're just gonna completely ignore it again. Hey, look, it's basically the blades from the first game. DMC sure loves their repetitive enemies. And who the hell is Dante? The son of the guy whom your order worships? Your yet-to-be-revealed uncle? The guy who looks like you? And here I was thinking I was slow. Credo, I'm pretty sure your order was to apprehend Nero, not kill him. Quite aggressive, knowing he is your subordinate. Then again, who the hell am I kidding? The boss fight with Credo is probably the best in the game. Good enough that I'll take off a sin for it. You possess the power of a demon. Pot calling the kettle black much? So do you. Why? Why did you do this? Your brother attacked me before stating what his intention was, transformed into a demon, attacked me again, and I simply defended myself. That's pretty much all Nero had to say. But higher brain function deteriorating is what happens when one gets pussy whipped. Agnes uses the power ring of teleportation. It was our intentions to protect you from the truth. Yeah, probably not a good idea to lie to her when just seconds later you claim you're not going to hurt her yet. I have no intentions of harming her. Yet. It's not like she would believe you or anything. His holiness predicted your defeat. And so ordered that your sister be utilized. So let me get this straight. Sanctus wanted Nero to be apprehended, so he sent his second in command to do so, but predicted Nero would defeat Credo, then ordered Agnes to capture Kitty A to bait Nero into chasing after her? When Nero was already looking for Dante and was curious about the Order's plans? I guess I can put this one on the list of needlessly complicated villain plans. Nero, we must set aside this battle. 
until I find out the truth of this. I mean, Agnes made it pretty clear what was really going on. You were played for a fool, and it's weird how you have the ability to fly, yet Nero will reach Kyrie way before you. What? Destroying the bridge controls isn't gonna work this time? Plus, isn't that the same type of demonic plant that Echidna controlled in the forest? Why doesn't Nero just use the Sephirothic fruit from earlier to clear the roots? Now that Kyrie has been captured and Nero has been lured here, I'm wondering if and when somebody is actually going to stop him, since he's the only one besides Dante in the way of Sanctus's plan, cause Agnes ends up fleeing after this battle. <laughs> See, there was one good thing that came out of the DMC reboot. It took our minds off of Nero throwing a tantrum like a petulant child. Oh, how adorable. Devil May Cry is attempting to do platforming once again. You, what are you doing here? Are you seriously asking the guy you've been tracking why he's in the location you've been tracking him to? Something is strange here. Why are we playing as the boss? That sword was used to separate our world from the demons. I can't have something of that kind of power floating around now, can I? It's gotta stay in the family. It is in the family, which is precisely why you let him keep it. Though I have to wonder why you did, since finding a motto is the entire reason why you're here in Fortuna in the first place. And you just defeated Nero. You're putting the fate of Fortuna in the hands of someone who's inexperienced with Yamato's true power. <laughs> that regal look suits you. I dress to impress. You got some pretty low standards if you need that to impress. Are you sure you wanna let him go? Yeah, I figure he can bear the burden. That's not going to be reassuring when you say you'll kick his ass if he screws up. Well, if the kid screws up, then I'll just have to kick his ass. And screw up, he certainly does. Ladies and gentlemen, um, DMC, Damsel May Cry. Within the Savior, your mortal bodies will combine. Sanctus, I think you have some trouble with your vision. See that right arm of Nero? Especially if I was a religious leader, I don't think I would believe Nero was 100% mortal. I'm here to save you. Please trust me. Hey Nero, you might want to speak louder so that she can actually hear you. Still, I must salute a man who carries the blood of Sparta. I appreciate subtlety more than most, but at that point, you might as well just throw up a banner that says, Hey fools, Nero is Virgil's son. I mean, there's only two sons of Sparta, and Dante's not getting it on with anyone. Nero, run! That's gonna be pretty difficult to do when he's in the grasp of the towering god statue. Love for a sibling. This game attempts to be hilariously ironic. You know, because Dante and Virgil were siblings who despised each other, and now Sanctus thinks it's foolish for a brother to love his sister. And one of Virgil's most famous lines is foolishness. Yeah, I know, it's as dumb as it sounds. Nero, I don't feel so good. I'll sweep the city and evacuate the people. Game denies me of a Dante Trish tag team. Plus, evacuating the city all by yourself sounds kind of ludicrous. Where the hell is Lady this entire time? Wasn't she part of this job as well? Do not fear! Our savior has come for us! Sanctus is able to amplify his voice without any means to do so. City is set ablaze despite the savior's beam simply vaporizing the demons. Capcom seriously included a Resident Evil self-destruct segment in their Devil May Cry game. Just a repeat of the cutscene you see when you start playing as Lady and Trish. So, I have a confession to make. Um... Dante is my spirit animal, precisely because of actions like this. Anyone this cool paying homage to Bruce Lee is A plus in my book. Every Devil May Cry game has at least one enemy that can eat a bag of dicks. Blitz will be the one to fulfill that role in this one. Pandora does not actually give you 666 ways of maiming your enemies. I mean, I realize how broken the game would be if that were the case, but it's still a sin. <laughs> Damn it, Dante! You just proved how utterly pointless everyone's favorite part of the game was. I admit that line made me laugh for some reason, but uh, if you're talking about Sanctus, that dude emerged with the savior and laid waste to the demons hours ago. Has he really been standing atop the savior, taunting and monologuing this entire time? And you're just standing here listening to him? Satisfied. You are set free. I mean, if you needed a reason to close out your Pornhub tab, there it is. You summon and kill. 
Summon and kill. I fail to see the logic here. Is set it. The price to pay for power? Humans. They are but stubborn and foolish. One could argue that stubborn and foolish mean the same thing. How can there be such a difference? Between us. Allow me to put this as simply as I possibly can. Dante is the son of Sparta, demon who helped seal away the portal to the demon world, demon whom your order worships, son of Sparta. If you're going to continue your research in the next world. No, 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 no. Do your homework first. But you can't do your homework until you've done your research first. Because research is all about investigating and analyzing and gathering data. You, you can't do your homework until you've got the data. Agnes gets shot in the head, but he's got no bullet wound. Okay, glad to know that we've established the sheath your sword to cause damage trope. It just runs in the family. Need some company? Uh, I think you better help the others. The others? You mean the others that were supposedly already evacuated from the city and out of harm's way? You traveled this far to fight me. You could never touch the power of the savior. <clears throat> Son of Sparta. If you look up the phrase, all style, no substance, you might be lucky enough to find a picture of the savior, because that's exactly what this boss fight is. See, I just knew that Capcom had... Such generous spirits. They knew that everyone loved this dice puzzle, so they brought it back in spades for one last... <laughs> oh man, I can't even pretend to care anymore. Wow, the absolute madman. They, they actually did it. They implemented the rule of three cliche, because I'm just fighting the same bosses that I've already fought twice before. We had originally intended Dante to form the Savior's core. Was he also originally going to be the only playable character in the game? Because it feels like that's what you're really trying to say through that dialogue. Uh, good to know that Capcom is still high on their eyeball fetish, even though it doesn't really serve a purpose in a particular setting. Why oppose the Order? I knew your faith was weak. But I always thought you served our wishes. If you knew his faith was weak, why the hell would you think he'd serve your wishes? Especially now that you've captured his girlfriend. But what really pissed me off was using Kidia. It's my one track mind. All right, it's my one track mind. All right, on Kitty A. I let the repeated final boss fight slide in DMC3 because that one actually had some emotional buildup towards it that paid off and the fact that it was intense from beginning to end. This one just feels like, okay, do your worst, generic evil Pope guy. This is where it started. This is where it'll end. You know, I was gonna send this for a it ends where it all began cliche, but then I realized this is the exact location where we properly began the game. It was actually on point for once. So instead, I'll send the fact that the savior survives, despite Sanctus being dead and all the demonic energy being removed. Wait for me. Well, duh, genius. What the hell else is she gonna do? Run away with Dante and Trish and have a threesome? You know? Wait. You forgot this. Keep it. What? I thought this meant a lot to you. Well, that's the only kind of gift worth giving. I have my suspicions that you're my brother's son, but I'm gonna wait 11 more years to tell you that. Hey Dante, will we meet again? Sure, in another console generation or so. No. No! For the love of Sparta, leave this in the garbage bin of history where it belongs! That's a solid performance for an old fart like you.